Hi friends. In today's video, we are doing a 48 hour readathon thing. So, I wanted to set myself up for success. So let's go over the TBR. This is going to go one of two ways. I'm going to finish the books that I wanted to read, or I'm going to uh, play Overwatch for the next 48 hours straight and do no reading. We'll see what happens. Uh, we're rooting for the reading. So I tried to set myself up for success because there's a couple of things that I want to read. And then of course I stopped by the library to pick up two books for another video and then I left with 15. So we have a couple of options in this here readathon. We'll start with the things that I own that I probably should get to and then we'll go to the library books which are probably what I'm going to get to. So I 100% top of the TBR Bane is helping. Bane says hi. Bane says hi. One through five of Demon Slayer. My lovely partner bought me the box set of all of the Demon Slayer volumes. So I would like to get through five of these and what is a better place to do that than in a readathon. I'm all caught up to date on the anime, but the manga is obviously completed, I think, at this point, or at the very least, it's further than the anime is. So, I want to get ahead and then gloat to my partner about the fact that I'm further ahead in the in the manga than he is in the anime, and that I know way more information than he does, like I have been doing with Chainsaw Man. So, one through five, we're gonna try. We also have The Stolen Air. This was not originally what I wanted to read for this video when I planned out this video because I forgot that I pre-ordered this. I forgot that it was coming out, if I had to be honest. This is the companion to the Folk of the Air trilogy. It's about Oak, who's her brother, who is Jude's brother. And all I know is it's like 10 years later, it's like an enemies to lovers situation. The original book that I had planned to read along with the manga was The Spells for Forgetting, which is magical realism mystery fantasy uh, romance somewhere along the way i don't quite know this guy comes back to his hometown where he like the town turned against him or something i'm intrigued by the mystery i haven't read anything by this author before people either seem to really enjoy her or not uh so that was what i was planning on reading but let's go over the huge stack of library books that i have uh next to me um, it just gets bigger uh, that I have as possible options. So first up we have volume one and two of Laura Olympus. I have read a good portion of this. I believe one and two is just the first season and I have read up to season two I think or three. I've read pretty far into this. I haven't completed it, but I I believe I've read what is contained in these two volumes, but I just love the Laura Olympus series. So when I saw that my library had them, which by the way, my library like rarely ever has like cool shit, um, I decided to check them out. And like, again, graphic novels are great for a read along. So these two are definitely strong possibilities. Another great option is All the Horses of Iceland, which is a pretty short uh, book. I have no idea. I've never heard anybody talk about this. It is um, a new release. I think it came out in September of 2022 and it's something to do with, I think it's a magical realism story and it's about a Norse trader who sent, who travels through Central Asia and the ghostly magic that followed him home to the land of fire, stone, and ice. His search for riches will take him from Hemgard through Khazaria to the steeps of Mongolia where he will barter for horses and return with much, much more. Dives into the secret, imagined history of Iceland's unusual horses brought to life by an expert storyteller. Not a horse girl, but this could be interesting and it's short. My camera's gonna die, so let me switch my battery out and we'll be back. Okay, we're back. So, this is short, could be promising. Hopefully it's emotional. That seems like the kind of story that could be emotional, could be good. Again, never heard anything about it, so. Then we have the book of everything, Everlasting Things. Again, I've never heard a talk about this. It seems to be a literary fiction story. It seems to be a romance. 
uh, lush, sensuous, and deeply romantic, the story of two lovers and two nations, split apart by forces beyond their control, yet bound by love, memory, and history, spanning continents and generations, steeped in the ancient art of perfum perfumery and calligraphy. It's a debut novel, and it is about, it, it's centered around the Indian in independence. That could be. This is giving very much um, stationery shop vibes which I've heard is very emotional. So hopefully this one is emotional too. I don't know if this is a romance or just like a fiction around a love story. We then have Black Cake, um, which is about Eleanor Bennett, who dies and leaves behind a puzzle for her two children, Byron and Benny. It's a Caribbean black cake. In her message, shares a tumultuous story about a headstrong young swimmer who escapes her island home under suspicions of murder. The heartbreaking tale unfolds, the secret she still holds back, and the mystery of a long-lost child challenge everything the siblings thought they knew about their lineage. I don't want to read any more than that. Again, another emotional story. Very excited for that one. We then have what is a delightful mystery, I think. I think this was Meg with Books, one of Meg with Books' favorite mysteries of last year, if I recall correctly. It's something about a mystery and time travel. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to know anything else. She has gone over the plot of this and it has not stuck up here. So I don't want to make it stick up here. I want to be surprised because she said this is delightful and very different than most mysteries. We then have um, two books that I am reading for other videos. Um, I'll be reading like a certain somebody that should be coming in February. So excited for this, very scared, excited for this one. So I obviously won't be reading that. So then we have Young Mungo. This is the author of Shuggy Bane, which is a book that I have on my TBR that I own. I think this is a love story between two men. One is Protestant, one's Catholic, uh, sworn enemies, they become best friends, and then they fall in love. So another love story. Don't know if it's a romance, but it's a love story. We then have something that I'm very excited for but hesitant about, and that is the Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches. I'm sure you are familiar with this. I don't think this needs really an inner, any, any introduction, but I have been craving a uh, cozy fantasy after I read The Undertaking of Heart and Mercy, and I've heard this is like a cozy fantasy with romance or a romantic relationship. Um, so excited for this one, hesitant, because a lot of people I think go in thinking this is a romance and I don't think this is a romance, or at least it's not a strong romance. Um, so that is another strong possibility. And then lastly is something that I probably won't pick up in this video, but I got it from the library, so it's worth mentioning, and that is Mistborn. I have a physical copy of all three books in this series, but I have them in the mass market, and I don't like reading big mass market books, so I got the trilogy from my library. I'm just waiting for the other two books to come through, uh, and I need to reread Mistborn and then read the second and the third one for the first time. So let's narrow it down. Um, I'm definitely gonna try to read this. This is pretty short. It is only like 350 pages. I read Holly Black very quickly. I would possibly like to try to get through this. Again, this is another short book, but I'm not familiar with this author's writing, so I don't know how like quickly I'll be able to get through it, but I don't, yeah, it's another like 350 page book. I will for sure be tr getting through one through five of Demon Slayer. And then I of course will be trying to read Lore Olympus volume one and two. So that is six, seven, eight, nine books, but I can get through these and the Demon Slayer pretty quickly. I think I read a manga volume like every 25 to 30 minutes. Um, and then, like I said, I definitely think we can get through all the horses of Iceland because this is only 100 pages and the writing is, you know. I, I feel like I want to try for two more. Can I read 12 books in 48 hours? Uh, probably not. So let's do, that's a 10, that's like a solid even number. Should, a, should we put 11? I feel like 11 is kind of a cursed number. I think if I make it through these, I will try to pick up the very secret society of irregular witches. Um, 
I think that's the plan. These are all of the things that I'm going to be trying to read over the next 48 hours. I don't have much going on. My partner and I aren't planning anything. I don't have anything to do. Um, so I will be starting this after my partner gets home and he's like settled in and all that. So I'll probably be starting it at about 5 p.m. and then I'll go 5 p.m. Sunday. That gives me enough time to edit this and all of that before, you know, my Sunday is over. Um, so that is it. That's the TBR. Let's get into it. I need a cup of coffee uh, and we'll probably start with, I'm thinking we start with All the Horses of Iceland just because this is the wild card that I could probably, that I might not like and like I want to get that out of the way, you know what I mean? So we're going to start with the Horses of Iceland and I'll be back. My disappointment is immeasurable. Okay, friends, it is 6 p.m. and I finished my first book. Uh, I didn't write this. This is not quite what I was expecting from this and like that's not the book's fault. I thought this was going to be a little bit more imaginative than it was, a little more prose heavy, folk tale, fable, fairy tale-esque and it read like a textbook. It says, a hypnotic historical fantasy with gorgeous and unusual literary prose from the captivating author of his other book, this, her other book. I don't necessarily agree. I don't think it was written like that. Um, I think it was written like a textbook, like I said. Uh, so not my thing. As I'm sure all of my uh, Laura Olympus fans noticed in my first clip, this is volume three, um, and the location that I went to when I went to go reserve the second one online has this, so I could have found it. Um, but I still think I'm going to read volume one. I could go on Webtoons and read volume two and then still read volume three, but I think I'm just gonna read volume one, get volume two, and then read volume two and three later probably not in this video um but i'm feeling this right now i want something really colorful something really beautiful and i like this story i'm familiar with the story the book that i just finished sort of taxed my brain in not a good way um despite it being so short it was quite uh boring so i am going to start volume one and I will update you when I am done with it. I'm excited. Like I said, I've read a decent portion. I think I've, cause I looked up what all the volumes were, like what the episodes were for each volume. And I've actually read, I think up to like 200. Um, so all of the volumes that are out, I've already read, but I definitely don't mind rereading. So this is a Hades and Persephone and Persephone is um, it's like grumpy sunshine. Persephone is trying to live in the mortal world to get away from her mother and she has like a cast of characters that are her friends um, and then Hades is you know the grump and he's like a soft cinnamon roll like my favorite type of Hades character. So we're gonna get into it.
Okay, so it is 6.53 and I just finished volume one and as expected, I gave this five stars and it's just as cute in regards to Persephone and Hades relationship. But yeah, I'm very excited to get volume two and continue on because I love it. And then I probably will read volume three and read the webtoon. Like reread the webtoon from where I left off or from where volume three leaves off and then catch up to where it is now. So five stars, love it, love it, love it. So beautiful um, and a great story. So she's very, very talented. So I think now I am going to start uh, the stolen air. Cause like I said, I do want to get through this um, during this little readathon. I started this yesterday and I got I got like a little bit into the first chapter and then I decided I was gonna read it for this readathon. So I'm gonna start back at chapter one. Um, we started the prologue with Ren being taken by her um, parents. Her parents are, she's the queen, she's the princess of the Court of Teeth and she was a changeling. And so she is taken back to fairy by her parents in the prologue and then she ends up getting put back in the human world. I don't know how big the time skip is um, but she doesn't go back to the family, the adopted family that she was living with before she got taken. Opening up chapter one, let's get into it. I'm hoping that this is just as good as the Folk of the Air trilogy so I will let you know. Okay, friends, it is 9.27. And I am 103, four pages into the stolen air. I'm having such a good time with this. We are following Ren, who was the daughter of the Lord and Lady of the Court of Teeth. So she's the one that had like the bridal, the one that was like leashed and all that. And she was the queen of the Court of Teeth, but her parents ruled through her basically. And at the end of the third book, Jude and Cardin, you know, made the Court of Teeth disband, made all of the members or the people that were loyal to them swear loyalty to Jude and Cardin and sent her away, sent Ren away um, to the mortal world. So she's now back in, she now was sent back to the mortal world, which is where she meets uh, Oak again. In the past, I have forgotten a lot of the stuff that happened in the third book because I've reread the first one several times, but I've only read the third one once, I think. So I forget a lot of stuff. So thankfully, Holly Black has included some like flashbacks of scenes between the two of them. So she is living on the streets in the human world and she's being hunted by the bat. Bagdonna or something like that. It seems to be some sort of like creature that works for her mother and she gets saved by Cardin and his like guard and they basically tell her that they are there to get her help, basically to her prisoner, to help them um, because her mother building an army and trying to what they what they assume is rebel against Jude and Cardin who still have the throne. So Oak is a prince and she's technically the queen of the Court of Teeth still. The Court of Teeth doesn't exist anymore but she's still the queen and before Jude kicked her out she made Ren's mother swear an oath of fealty to Ren 
so that Ren can control her mother. Oak is hoping that if they take her with them, if they take Ren with them, she can, you know, control her mother and tell her mother to stop. Um, cause she is like building an army by using Mabe, Queen Mabe's bones. And she's kind of like the same fairy entity that she is in every other story that has a Mabe. Um, she's like a powerful fairy, basically. Powerful fae. And her bones are now being used by Ren's mother to make these creatures. And so they are now traveling to the Court of Moth, which is supposed to have some sort of knowledge about Ren's mother and maybe how to stop her or something like that. We don't quite know. Um, but I just, I like this world so much. I think Holly Black is so good at writing very enchanting worlds. Like they feel otherworldly. They feel very, how I imagine being a human in a fairy world would be just very like haunting and kind of um, ethereal and just like out of space and time, if that makes sense. But what's interesting about this is in the Folk of the Air trilogy, Jude is a human that is living in Elfheim, but she desperately wants to be a fae. She doesn't want to be a fairy or a fae specifically, but she wants to have a place with them. Whereas Rin is a fairy, but she doesn't feel like a fairy. She doesn't really have a place in the human world or in fae, in fairy, in Elfheim, whatever. Um, so she kind of is like a, she doesn't really have like a home, I guess. So she doesn't really consider herself a fairy or a human, but it's just a, like the exact opposite of Jude, where she has no interest in being in Elfheim and fairy at all. And she would rather just be allowed to exist um, and never have to see fairy again. So it's definitely good so far. Like the thing with these stories is nothing happens but a lot happens if that makes sense it's never it doesn't feel like it's something that's particularly impactful there's usually like a couple of impactful scenes throughout the book um but there's just this quiet tension through the whole story that just like carries the story along and i think because she has this like ethereal writing in addition to the books being pretty short it just works um i would like to finish this tonight but I'm getting a little sleepy, as you can probably tell from the sound of my voice. Um, but I, if I can't finish, I want to get to at least 200 and then finish out the rest of it tomorrow morning uh, so we can get into another book. But like, I'm just sitting here and like reading and just reading and just reading and just reading and I'm not even noticing time passing. Um, like I just updated you with the time for the sake of the vlog, but I hadn't even like, it could have been two in the morning it could have been five in the morning. I would not have, I wouldn't have noticed. Um, but yeah, so hopefully I can get to page 200 before I get too sleepy. Um, usually on the weekends, like 1030 is my bedtime, 1030, 11. So maybe another good hour of reading and then we'll go to bed and then we'll wake up and read some more. So I'll probably update you in the morning. I don't know if I'm going to be coherent enough to update you. Uh, at the 200 page mark, but I'll update you in the morning and we'll see how I'm feeling then. It is one o'clock on Saturday and I just finished The Stolen Air and I decided to give this four stars. I think this was a really strong start to the series. I really enjoyed being back in this world and I think that Oak and Ren, Surin, um, are interesting characters. I definitely uh, still agree with the things that I said in my last clip about 
Holly Black's writing just being very dreamy and transportive. And I felt the same feelings that I felt when I read The Cruel Prince. This series in the this series and the Folk of the Air trilogy definitely are going to be for a lot of people, especially if you're expecting something really high action. Um, this is not really it. This is more quiet and, like I said, dreamy and more focused on the characters. I think now I am going to read um, one through five of Demon Slayer. I should be able to get through these pretty quickly um, and then we can move on to the spells for forgetting. I just finished volume one through five of Demon Slayer. I gave volume one four stars, volume two four stars, volume three five stars because he's one of my favorite characters. I gave this five stars and I gave this, no, I gave this four stars and I gave this five stars. So overall this is like one of my favorite anime slash manga series this follows tanjiro who's in the beginning of the story his family gets murdered by a demon and he comes back to discover that his sister has also been turned and he ends up basically becoming a demon slayer with the ultimate goal of finding and killing muzan who is like the creator of all demons basically and he created like he turned his sister and he is just getting assignments um for you know from the demon slayer core and i think it's really really good the thing that i love about this story that i think sets it apart is tanjiro's character and we do get a snippet of whoever he's fighting like the demons that he's killing their past lives, their backstories and stuff, and just like a snippet of understanding of how they came to be who they were. And the compassion of Tanjiro just like is reflected throughout the entire story. He always feels pity and sadness for the demons, no matter how they've killed, how many they've killed, who they've killed. He always has a level of compassion for them. And I think his character is just like, an outstanding character and the whole cast of characters are interesting um but i think tanjiro in particular is like what sets this series apart so i really like tanjiro that means that we are moving on to spells for forgetting i did read the first chapter of this in a try a chapter tag uh, and it did interest me but it wasn't like the most interesting book that i read so i just didn't end up picking it up from what I gather, it's about a guy who returns to his small town after the death of his mother and he left the town because he was convicted or he was accused of murdering another teenager. But I think this is, it's not like a town, it's like an island, I believe, or maybe like a coastal town. Um, but yeah. So I'm interested to see if this is like a mystery mystery or if it's just like a fiction story, regular fiction. So I'm going to get into this. It is, like I said, quite short. So I probably will update you at the 100 page mark and then um, when I'm done with it or maybe the 50% mark. And then when I'm done.
Jones. It is 9.30 um, on Saturday. I'm in my comfy clothes and I just got halfway through uh, spells for forgetting. Let me hold the dust jacket up. This is not quite what I thought it was going to be. Um, but this is basically about Emery and August, and then you're getting points of view, like random points of view. But August is returning to this small town um, that he, him and his mother fled when he was 18 after he was accused of murdering his friend. And he comes back because his mother has died and she wants to be buried in this on this island and this island is a very closed close close knit community all the families stay on the island um all of the businesses are run by the same families and everybody knows everybody and so he comes back to the small town to this this island it's an island selling the property selling the house and selling the orchard um that is was owned by his grandfather and then sold off to the city or the island, the people, uh, when his grandfather passed away. He's trying to do that. And then we also are getting um, Emery's point of view, who never left the, t the island. When they were teenagers, they dated. They had like a little group of four people and they were, August and Emery were dating and she stuck up for him when he was accused and that has sort of put a flag i guess uh, or a bad uh, people in the town just like don't really trust her um because ma the majority of the people believe that he did it her father is runs a pub she runs her mother's old tea shop both of which i guess have been in the family a while you're just following her well multiple points of view of like the intricacies of this town and the relationship that everybody has. I thought it was going to be more of a mystery, which has started to kick in at this point. August might not be as innocent as she thought he was, but also there's other secrets that people are hiding about. The fire that happened prior to finding her friends Lily's, the dead girl's body, and there's just some other more nefarious things going on that we're getting through other points of view in the town and nothing's really being explained. Um, and then we're getting flashback scenes of August and Emery's when they were kids, like year, the years leading up to the fire. So basically August's family owns an orchard, which is like kept the island afloat basically. His grandfather was very abusive to him. Um, and so he had a, a bad relationship with his grandfather, but it was kind of assumed that he would eventually take over the orchard and there was a fire and nobody knows what happened. Um, I believe from what I gathered, there was like a big party at the orchard and then the fire happened. And then after the fire was out, uh, Lily's body was found who was like their friend. And August is the only one that didn't have a solid alibi at the time. Uh, he wasn't at the party with everybody else, but their friend and Emery's current boyfriend, Dutch, is it Dutch or Butch? I feel like it's Dutch, provided an alibi for August and we saw a little interaction with them where we find out that that might have been a lie. Um, I'm thi there's definitely something that I'm thinking, like a twist that I'm thinking, and if it's that's the twist, like it was incredibly obvious, but also I don't necessarily know if this is trying to be the most twisty mystery ever, uh, because it's definitely a heavy focus on just like the vibes of the island. It's giving me very much like forks feelings. It's very uh, rainy and um, a lot of fog. There's witchiness going on. Like it's it's agreed upon by all of the residents that there is magic at play on the island and Emery's family could do magic and like the women of the on the island could do magic. I am getting quite sleepy um, so I probably won't finish this tonight but yes I'm definitely enjoying it atmosphere wise 
but if the pace continues as it is for it being such a short book I don't know if I'm gonna be able to give it like a super high rating um because I am not like a vibes girl I can't read stories for just the atmosphere I need something else either a character study or a really intense plot or a mystery or something I can't just be like floating you know um even if it's a quiet story it has to have something it's not just like descriptions of the island we're starting we're starting to get there she's starting to question things and hopefully she'll start investigating things for herself but i'm gonna get back into it and we will talk when i'm done um and hopefully i can get into the last book so Okay friends, it is Sunday at 2.43, but I have finished my last book, so it's time to wrap up the video. But let's talk about the last two things that I read. I ended up finishing The Spells for Forgetting last night. I stayed up quite late to finish this, not because I was so blown away that I was like really enjoying it and I couldn't put it down, but just because I wanted to be done with it. I did end up giving this three stars and I think the issue that I had was something that I alluded to in the previous clip which is that nothing in this is particularly fleshed out or developed. It's literally just about the atmosphere like that is the biggest emphasis. The writing is very luscious but all of the elements of the story that you would want to be really well fleshed out to make it a mystery wasn't fleshed out enough to make it a romance wasn't fleshed out enough. I didn't believe in their relationship. There was no character work done to make me believe that they would work in the present. It was just sort of like, well, they're soulmates, so it is what it is. And the mystery was very, very, very rushed. I would say a majority of this book is very slow and kind of meandering. And then like the last 30 pages, like everything happens and the pacing is just very off and it feels unsatisfying for sure. Um, so I gave this three stars. I think if you were just like a vibes only person, you can go in and read this and enjoy it. But it just didn't have all of the elements that I wanted from the story. And then we also have the very secret society of irregular witches, which I have pretty much the same feelings about. I also gave this three stars. This is about Mika, who is a witch. And she gets a job at the Nowhere House as the teacher of three witches. And there are three adults that also work at the Nowhere House. One of them being Jamie, who is the love interest in the story. And again, not super fleshed out. It definitely has like the cozy vibes, um, but it wasn't everything that I wanted it to be. I read this very, very quickly. I started it when I got up this morning and I finished it like you know 10-15 minutes ago and I just devoured the story because it's quick and easy and it's cozy but again nothing about it was super fleshed out the romance was just they had a couple of interactions on page and then the majority of it was telling the family elements and the found family elements were cute but the conflict of the story was wrapped up very quickly so it just was another meandering book that was left a little bit unsatisfying the characters were hard to connect to and i do think that if you go into this story uh the comparison to the house in the cerulean sea is unfair um they definitely have very similar vibes and it is about three people three kids with powers and like the, the adults you know trying to raise them but it's like it's cozy and, and stuff but I just don't think that it's fair to go in with such high expectations if you really loved The House in the Cerulean Sea. I think if you just want a cozy little witch story that has heavy emphasis on witches and casting spells and foraging in the woods and very just calm and cozy then you will enjoy this. It just again wasn't everything that I wanted out of the story. I think when it got serious it just didn't do it in a way that I liked. So that is all the books that I'm going to read for the video. Uh, I managed to finish all of the ones that I wanted to read except 
the third, obviously the third volume in the Lore Olympus series. So I read 10 books in 48 hours, but I would definitely say my most successful read was Stolen Air and probably Demon Slayer. Um, I really enjoyed both of the, the stories and they were both kind of what I was anticipating. Um, so that is going to be it for the video. Let me know down below your thoughts on anything that I read. What out of this stack have you read? Or are you anticipating to read? I would love to hear it. If you don't have anything to say, leave crown down in the comments. If you are looking for more content from me, you can check out my Instagram or my podcast Instagram. You can also check out my podcast on all your favorite streaming platforms. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you guys in my next one.